the worst feeling is when you don't even know what experiment to run. Being a founder, it's really like a test it's a mental of your, thing, yeah. your mental resilience. There is nothing else I would want to be doing other than doing this. It's a lot of stress that you, one person puts themselves under. This was a very invigorating conversation of Sherry Wong, my today's guest. Sherry got her degree in molecular biology and then spent a few years in tech, also in tech investing. But she always knew that she wanted to build a company. She also shares the struggles of being a solo founder. So for any solo founders out there, this um, is a conversation full of life, perseverance, persistence, energy, and hustle for the luck of better word. I've really enjoyed this conversation for, with Sherry. She actually lives in Singapore and this was the first time we're meeting in person. And I hope you enjoyed it and will take away as much as I did from it. Okay, Sherry, thank you so much for being here all the way from Singapore just for this founder mm, Nothing else, session. just this. I know, it's so special that you had to fly from the other part of the world. So thank you so much. Cheers. 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 Water cheers. We gotta stay healthy. We're yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you become a founder? What's your story? Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we'll like backtrack. Young Sherry. I think a lot of founders, what I always say is, it kind of feels like this itch you always got to scratch. I think people that are very entrepreneurial tend to always dabble in side projects and will always do things on the side. That was the same for me. So yeah, as a kid, always knew I wanted to build something, just didn't know what it was and when it would happen. And so everything I think leading up to this point, it's kind of just like connecting the dots backwards. You kind of just realize, yeah, it feels like this is what you're meant to be doing. I still have my existential life crises along the way as well. But um, my so background, all of us. <laughs> yeah, man, um, maybe a bit about maybe like adult life background. Um, so I studied something entirely unrelated to what I do. I don't know if you know this. Actually. I actually don't. No. I studied molecular biology. Oh, wow. This is amazing. <laughs> I studied chemical engineering. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Super no, did not pursue I that. that we have another yeah. commonality. But I think, I think in hindsight, okay, if I were to go back, maybe I would have studied computer science or something, just so I can be a little more technical now. But I think studying sciences is actually great because mm. it gives us a very analytical, scientific approach to everything that we do. So no regrets there, but I wanted to be a doctor. What type of doctor? Dermatologist. Oh, dermatologist. Yeah. Well, you have beautiful skin. So, thanks. I guess you still are very interested in skin like, and dermatology. But the thing with dermatology was actually... I don't think I would have been a doctor for all the right, any of the right reasons. It was just purely dermatology was like not on call and I could start a private practice, which is the business side. I just thought doctor was like a very reputable career to yeah. go after. Marry that with business, start a private practice. I think as I went through university, I definitely knew that it wasn't the path for me. I was hanging out more with the business kids in the business mm -hmm. school building than I was in the science building because they would always be prepping for pitch competitions, mm -hmm. case studies. And I was like, I want to do those. But I was in a business major, so I couldn't take part in them. So I was always bootstrapping things on the side. Ended up graduating, realized I just want to work at a startup, went on AngelList, just applied for any job, any startup. You need to have that free graduated. Yeah, pretty okay. much. I was just like, I don't know what I can do because I'm already kind of behind from everyone since I didn't study business. But I started a nonprofit in Canada oh, when wow. I was graduating high school. And, and which I, city in Canada are you from? A small town called Cambridge, Ontario. Oh, nice. Of course, yeah. I like Cambridge. Yeah. yeah. And so, oh, yeah. You yeah. would know. You spent time. Yeah, so, spent some time in Canada. Exactly. Actually, I've never been to Cambridge, but I just know the name. There's no the reason you would go there anyway. <laughs> but like... Yeah, so I started a nonprofit. It was to help other students apply for scholarships, basically. Mm -hmm. But I realized afterwards when I was applying for jobs that things in marketing, digital marketing, things in sales, a lot of things I was doing were all of those skills. I just didn't know there was a name for it. Like mm -hmm. when we were doing fundraiser events, I wanted people to show up at the event. And I was like, what's the best way to get students there? We should be in the newspaper. And so I would go look at the newspaper and literally pick up the phone and call these reporters and ask them to report in it. I realized four years down the line, that's called code calling mm -hmm. and code emailing. And so I realized afterwards that there was always that interest there. I just didn't know there was a term for mm -hmm. it. Applied for jobs on AngelList, got a moved to Montreal mm -hmm. to work at a startup. Beautiful city. Started, yeah, it's really nice, mm -hmm. isn't it? And it just started basically from there. Uh, and then I got a job opportunity to move to Singapore. It was with an early stage fund and they were investing in the creator economy. And you were already a creator since like 10 years ago, right? Yeah, exactly. Since I was like a young teenager, had been filming videos, but creator economy wasn't even a term. Yeah. Even five years ago, no one even knew about the space yeah. very much. It was just influencer marketing and that's about it. And so I got an opportunity to move to Singapore, which they definitely took a bet on me. I was pretty much still a fresh grad at that mm -hmm. point. 
and I didn't know I have no finance background mm -hmm. so very much the things I was focusing more on were more deal sourcing partnership related and very creator facing work mm -hmm. and then they were opening an office in Singapore moved there that was already yeah four and a half was five years ago time Person. flies yeah. yeah and then yeah I always worked at early stage companies in general even the fund was very early stage as well and then last year I took a leap of faith embarked on the founder journey amazing which had its ups and many 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 downs <laughs> as well as yes. i'm sure you're aware yeah. so yeah that's basically a year over a year later now mm -hmm. we are pivoted a few times and landed at building roster amazing yeah. what is roster so roster one-liner it's a hiring platform for the creator economy so we help creators hire the best behind the camera teams so everything from video podcast editors, script mm -hmm. writers, thumbnail designers, yes. creative directors. But now there's a lot of new roles that have come up that these jobs never really existed before, like ideation strategists. Full-time job is to brainstorm new video ideas and maximize it from an SEO perspective to make sure that mm -hmm. it has the best potential to go viral, let's say. A lot of creators are hiring COOs now, but you wouldn't necessarily go on LinkedIn to hire for it because the profiles might not be right. So we're just a home for all of the jobs to live on and we make hiring easier from like a finance and legal perspective. What made you take that leap of faith? Yeah, uh, I think it was just a matter of time. I was actually bootstrapping things on the side even mm -hmm. four or five years ago. I don't know if you know this actually. No. I wanted to go to Glassdoor for creators four or five years ago. Wow, four or five years ago? Okay, yeah. Before it was even such a big thing. Exactly. Now, a few people are building that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't have a technical background, mm -hmm. which obviously comes with its difficulties as well, but did you know that Google Sites is a thing? So you can build landing pages with Google Sites. So I embedded a Google form in it. I called it the invite only creator community. <laughs> and then I sent it out to a bunch of creators and I said, hey, if you fill this Google form and tell me how much you got paid for a brand deal, I'll give you access to an anonymous database. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and the database was literally the, the form entries on an Excel sheet <laughs> yeah, yeah. with the name and email columns removed. Yeah. And then we ended up getting over 3,000 data points. Wow, that's incredible. And that's this so is, scrap. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I know, actually. Yeah. I, but then at that point, it was just, I just wanted like, I was itching yeah. to do something. And that was when I was working at the, the fund as yeah. well. And then I kind of just put on a back burner. Mm -hmm. I think I wasn't ready at that point. I just didn't really think much of it. And then a year or two ago, I'm sure you know as well, there's a lot, the, the few companies that started building a glass door for creators. And that was pretty much my wake up call at that point was, oh man, I was doing this like five years ago and it's good. The industry has grown. Yeah. TikTok has blown up has in the last couple of years. More. Exactly. So creator, creator related materials are so much more accessible now. Mm -hmm. So now is a good time to take that leap of faith. And then I got introduced to someone who's at, a partner at Antler. They were like, hey, our next cohort starts in a week and a half. Mm. Do you want to join? And, and so you joined Antler. I joined Antler right away. Um, and you have to do it full time. And they take care of like the visa issues. Uh -huh. So I was able to stay in Singapore Amazing. and still like embark on it. So I did Antler, tried to find a co-founder, mm. didn't find anyone. So I didn't take an investment from them. And then right after I joined Entrepreneur First, mm -hmm. which is another early stage deep mm. tech focused incubator program. And then did the same thing, didn't find a co-founder. So I was still bootstrapping on the side, but it took a few iterations to get to roster basically. So when you say you were bootstrapping on the side, were you still full-time at a fund or have you already left? No, I, I, I left after, after that I joined another startup and then I went on the founder journey. So, oh, gotcha. So yeah. you, you were in Endler full-time and then you joined another startup once Endler was done. Oh, no, no, no. So no, okay. Endler, you basically join us kind of like an entrepreneur. So you're okay. there for two months and your entire job is just to yeah. figure out what you're going to build. Right. And then Entrepreneur First afterwards was another program that was for founders. And then they basically help you find a co-founder. Uh -huh. And if you don't find a co-founder, you kind of just leave the program afterwards. Got and it. you don't take a fund, like you don't take a check from them. Gotcha. So when I was bootstrapping on it, like in the program, I didn't have a technical co-founder, but if I wanted to build something out, I'd find a bootstrappy way to like use Airtable and like yeah. match it up with a bunch of different things. So last year before, pivoting into roster, I was building a CRM for, yeah, the for creators, economy. Yeah. Um, and that was like just figuring out how to use Figma for the first time and giving yourself 48 hours to build a prototype just to like get in the hands and to be able to do demos and just continue the user interviews. Figuring all of that out along the way was pretty much eight, nine months of last year. And then throughout the entire time, you're kind of just burning through your savings, right? Yeah. So every single time you're back at square one, you're like, crap i'm back at where i started a couple months ago still trying to figure out what problem i can solve that's painful enough and then it's basically that entire process and it gets a little bit demoralizing sometimes yes. i don't know if you did you pivot a few times along the way as well um not 
with this current product yet, although right now we're very much in the stage of like just a lot of experimentation, not necessarily pivoting, but we're yeah. the same uh, problem space. But once I left Airbnb for almost a year, I was working on a bunch of different projects to figure out what is it that I wanted to do. And um, on the side, I also tapped my hands more or tapped my feet more into helping startups hire Eastern European engineers and that was something that you know kind of made sense it was making money uh there was a really yeah. great team back in Belarus so it was kind of like a very solid business model that you could pursue and grow and build and I was doing it for about six months and then I was like did I really leave my job to build an outsourcing company I just realized how not really passionate I was about it like mm -hmm. it was fun it was clear yeah. how to make money with it it's a very varying business so there's a ton of challenges I by no means want to say that it's you know an easy and clear path yeah. not at all but it was just like not the type of thing that I was excited about then I have realized that I'm only really doing it so that I feel like I, I'm standing on more or less like solid grounds with something yeah. because otherwise I had no plan whatsoever like I was just dabbling at things that were curious to me because I allowed myself to have this time to you know explore my curiosities but at the same time you know I was very much like okay when 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 am I going to come up with something that I'm excited about when am I going to have more of a solid plan? Um, yeah. You know, it's already been X amount of months since I left my job. Feels. Yeah, exactly. And then six months into this outsourcing thing, I was like, I have to step away from it. I'm just spending time on it without, you know, any clear path for uh, growth. Yeah. Like, it's not something that I see myself doing for a long time. So why am I even spending time on this right now? Yeah. Like, I should be spending all the time figuring out what I actually want to do. And so I stepped away from it completely and it was month seven or eight or maybe even nine since I left Airbnb and I was like, wow, I'm literally back to square one. Oh. I have like no plan yeah. whatsoever. I, um, you know, I'm eating through my savings. And at the same time, I was like, I, you know, that was the goal to, you know, give myself time and I allocated a certain amount of budget. I think I gave myself a year to kind of screw around and figure it out and not be so attached to the goal of like, I have to have a plan right now because yeah. I think that's when you be, can be the most creative and you can then lean into more of your interests as opposed to being driven by um, your desire to have an outcome. Um, but still, it was really tough because yeah. I didn't, you know, it's been a long time and there was something that I was working on and I realized it wasn't it. And um, yeah, it was quite demoralizing. But I would imagine that pivoting a few times on the thing that you were thinking yeah. is the thing was probably even much harder than what I've experienced. Different type of pain for sure. Yeah. No, same timeline, around eight or month, nine months after like leaving your job, yeah. it's like crap, we're almost hitting the one year mark and you allocate a certain amount of savings to burn through, you're like, the time is, yeah. the clock is the clock is ticking, ticking and you need to figure it out. But you also, sometimes you just can't rush these things either. Yeah. It's just, if it's not working, it's not working. I think for a good one or two months, I was kind of just floating around. I was like, you know what? I don't need to build a new creator space. Obviously mm -hmm. it'd be a colossal waste of my experience, both as a creator and working in the industry. But I just want to build shit that people want. Literally, is the only thing at the end of the day. I just want to know how it feels to build something and get it in the hands of someone and them being like, oh, this is super cool. And they come back voluntarily instead of me hounding them, asking them for feedback. <laughs> it's just wanting to feel that type of win. Yeah, I think chasing that feeling was basically like a good chunk of last year. And then, yeah, at, at the end of the day, I think I, I don't know about you, but like I kind of, I want to build in the creator space. It's an industry that I genuinely do find really, really intriguing. I wouldn't have filmed YouTube videos for 10 years if I didn't yeah. find it interesting. I think it's one of the lowest barrier to entry industry and ways to make money on the side. Even if you have a full-time job, you can monetize if you've got some type of knowledge about something or you've got an interest area and everyone has a phone, you can pick it up. And TikTok has made discoverability so much so easier. Amazing. And like the trajectory of your life can change overnight if one of your TikTok videos blows up. And I think that's really interesting and it's amazing because it opens up so many opportunities you didn't even know existed. That's why I find the creator space really intriguing, but it's also a very difficult user group to build for. I'm sure you know, yeah. very difficult to like get in constant contact with, very difficult to build something that they need because they've got so much on their plate. They're pulled in many different directions. They don't really want to pay for things. It's just all the things all that the things, you don't yeah. want in one yeah. bucket. But I think if you can, 
find a way to build something that's useful. At least the hope is that, yeah.